We are in the land of fast racing cars, and we are here to talk about fast changes. But my speech is about slow thinking, so it seems to be a paradox. But uh, my message here will be that to be able to cope with these fast changes, we need to be creative. And in order to be creative, you need to slow down the flow of your thoughts. Let's see why the pace of change in our society is so fast. We know that it's due to technology, and especially information and communication technologies, that allow us to access information and distribute information in no time. Instantaneous access to all of the knowledge in the world. The information society is such that information is a commodity. We all have information. But then what is our dignity related to? What is the difference between us as human beings? The difference is made by what you generate out of this common shared layer of information. Our ability to imagine the future. Our ability to change the course of the evolution. And this is where creativity comes in. And so if you're not going to listen to me anymore until the end of the speech, just take this message on. Creativity, now and in the future, is not a luxury, it's a necessity for us to survive. And you might say, well, but I am not creative, which is not true, of course. As a minimum, just as a minimum, we were all children once, and we were able to imagine, use our fantasy, play for hours with nothing. So we were very creative, and then maybe something happened in the course of our development. So let me tell you very briefly something about organs. When we are born, all of our organs are complete and fully functional. There is only one organ which is not yet complete, which is our brain. When we are born, our brain is rich in neurons and very poor in connections. So in the course of the development, the first two years of our life, Many, many connections, many synapses are thrown out and tried out. And as you see from this chart, when we are two years old, we have maximum connectivity, and that connectivity allows us to make associations between anything. And that is a very slow modality of thinking, and not very precise. An input from the outside world gives you a very, very spread activation. But then, only those activations that turn out to be useful and confirmed by the environment and confirmed by our parents and our friends, our experience, those are confirmed and they become thicker and thicker and all of the rest of the brain that we don't use is pruned out. We lose it. So we only retain those connections that are proven to be useful and therefore our brain is developed in a biocultural way. But let's go back to the time when we were two years old, and I want to give you an example of this very widespread activation. So I want to tell you about my little nephew, Elenia. Elenia is, is one, one and a half, half years, years old. old. She, she was, was in, in our, our kitchen, kitchen a few weeks, weeks ago, ago, looking inside, inside the closet, closet, and, and she, she went, went babao. Well, we said, well, we have no, no dog, dog inside, inside our, our kitchen, kitchen but, but she insisted, babao. So, so we, we looked, looked inside, inside the closet, closet to see what she was, she was looking, looking at, at, and this, this is what we saw. saw. A, a duster. duster. Now, no, a, a duster, duster is not a dog. dog. But, but you can create, create an association between the duster and the tail of the dog. dog. And, and for Elenia, this was completely natural and fast, and, and it was possible to associate the sound, babao, to the duster. This ability to make bold associations between entities which are very far away from a semantic point of view is fundamental to creativity. But something happens when we grow up and something else that makes us very fast and speedy in our thinking, which is myelinization. The fact is that the axons that interconnect our neurons become surrounded by this myelin that makes the flow of the action potential faster and more precise, more isolated between different axons. All in all, this adds up to excellent cognitive performance. We are very good thinkers, fast thinkers. We come to conclusions very fast. 
And let's do an exercise all together. I want to hear your voice to show how good we are in performance. So let's read together here. Without a doubt, our brain is extremely fast and efficient in reading sentences in which several spelling errors appear. This ability relies on the fact that we can grasp a meaning by projecting on our knowledge, avoiding to spend time on unnecessary details. Very good. You're excellent. Excellent thinkers. Fast thinkers. This is what we can do. We take any input from the outside world and we center it onto what we already know. In the end, we always see the same things. Except that sometimes there are ambiguities. So, but what if a new agonel should appear? This is more difficult to interpret. And because that agonel, we don't know what it means. So when that happens, we use the context, we use the environment to interpret. So if the environment is the heavens, maybe now we read, what if a new angel should appear? But if a, there's another environment, and the environment is a modern architecture, we might imagine that this sentence is, what if a new angle should appear? But once we reach one of the two conclusions, then we are convinced that that is the truth. Very fast decisions and prejudice come from that. Now, this is all great because this is fundamental for survival. We need water to flow at the bottom of canyons very fast, freely, with very little energy expenditure. This is fundamental for us to survive. However, if you want to be creative, you need to go back up to the surface of the Grand Canyon and excavate a new canyon. And this takes much more energy, and this takes much more time. So essentially, in order to be creative, you need to be able to stop the flow of the main ideas, the dominant ideas, and this allows you to open up all the possible alternatives. When the famous French psychologist Binet defined intelligence, at the start of the 20th century, he said intelligence is the ability to inhibit the instinct response. Today we can say creativity is the ability to in inhibit the intelligent response plus the instinct response. We need to be able to generate all alternatives. Uh, that allows us to give value to the inputs that we receive from the outside world without centering them immediately onto what we already know. So for example, let's take one of these strange misspelled words, take new lodge. New lodge does not mean anything, you agree with me? We can break it down and see what it sounds like. New sounds like novelty, but also the past tense of the verb to know. Lodge sounds like a mountain chalet. So let's bring together these two ideas and we start designing a new service. It's a bed and breakfast, it's a new lodge. The new lodge is a place where you have accommodation, yes, but also a cultural experience about knowledge from the past. And so you could have thematic new lodges, one for the Renaissance, one for the World War I and World War II, and you can create a chain of these beds and breakfasts, the new lodges, and if you go around the entire chain, then you relive an historical era. And you can have a social network where people exchange scores and opinions, not only on the cleanliness of the sheets, but also on the cultural experience. Let me give you one more tool that we use to generate ideas in a slow fashion. The ability to go beyond literal meaning, metaphors. And since we are 500 years from the death of Leonardo da Vinci, let me say that Leonardo was a master of metaphors drawing inspiration from nature to devise machines and inventions that anticipated the course of our evolution for centuries, and especially hiding meaning in his paintings. Now we take the most famous fresco in the world, which is uh, the Cenacolo, and you might be surprised to know that if you take the position of the hands of Jesus and the apostles and the pieces of bread on the table, you put them on a musical score, 
a melody comes out which is very mysterious, one of the hidden meanings by Leonardo. So let's take this method, this Leonardo method of metaphors, to generate ideas on any target. Let's suppose you want to generate ideas for circular economy and you want to draw inspiration from nature, for example, a rabbit. And we build a nonce metaphor, a metaphor that nobody has ever heard before. We say circular economy is a rabbit. That does not mean anything. There's no meaning. It's out of the common knowledge domain. It's out of the box. Yes, this is a good place to start to generate ideas. A posteriori, you search for meaning. There is no meaning a priori. There is no reason to say this sentence. So what are the characteristics of a rabbit? Many, but maybe it jumps. So jumping applied to circular economy. Still nothing, still dark. Cir what's inside circular economy? Many things again, but maybe recycling. And recycling is a series of stages. One of these stages is going back down to the raw materials. So maybe the idea now could be to start to jump some of these stages to shorten the cycle and make it more efficient. Maybe we could jump going back down to raw materials. And now an idea starts to take shape slowly starts to take shape. So the idea is that instead of throwing away all the packaging material and we throw away tons of packaging material every day, we try to reuse that. The problem is how do we bring that back to the producer? So the model, the business model now becomes that you order your grocery online, that grocery is delivered to you, but the person that delivers also collects. So now it's not unidirectional, it's bidirectional, and that person becomes the collector for the packaging material that goes back to the producer. So this is just one example of what happens when you allow your mind to visit a state in which you have never been before, and maybe the entire human species have never been before, and you slowly draw the consequences a posteriori. So now if somebody tells you, well, you're really a slow thinker, you should say, thank you, thank you very much.